and welcome back to our first Odie Friday. This week we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, the last couple of weeks I've been reading excerpts from First Lady's auto autobiographies. Um, but instead of the autobiography um, this week, I'm actually going to be reading from I Love You, Ronnie, the letters of Ronald Reagan to Nancy Reagan. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because as I was reading through um, Nancy Reagan's autobiography, I was finding that the thing that kept coming up is um, her love for her husband, and that's just a really important part of, um, I think, who she who she is. Um, and so instead of reading from her normal biography, autobiography, I'm going to read um, just an excerpt from um, what she wrote in this book. Christmas 1980. It was perhaps the most important turning point in all of our lives. We were due to leave for Washington in just a few days, and we both had a lot of things in our mind. They were different things, but still, they were there, and they preoccupied us. We've been thrilled by the campaign and election night, and now we were planning for our new lives. Ronnie was thinking about all that it would mean to become president. He had been very clear about his positions and where he wanted the country to go, but the idea of actually sitting in the Oval Office was daunting. I, on the other hand, was packing, getting ready to move us to Washington, clearing out closets and cleaning the carport, which over the years I had filled with baskets and more baskets. Christmas and Christmas, none, nevertheless, we were there at home in California. Ronnie's thoughts were of those closest to him. Our family gathered around us for one last celebration in our house in Pacific Palisades. It was a strange time, and the last time we would ever have Christmas together in the house where Ronnie and I had raised our children and built our lives. On Christmas Day, our children and their families, plus Ronnie's brother Moon and his wife Bess, came to dinner. We exchanged presents. Ronnie made a toast, as he always did, and he summed up, I think, what we all felt. This toast is for all of us, not for what we're about to become, but for what we've been to teach others for so many years. In the morning, I had found a wonderful letter, just as I almost always found a Christmas letter from Ronnie throughout our years of marriage. Christmas was, of course, a special occasion, but it wasn't the only time Ronnie wrote to me. From the earliest days of our marriage and even before, Ronnie wrote to me all the time beautiful letters with descriptions of the world he saw around him, moving letters filled with emotion which deepened as we fell more and more in love. No matter what else was going on in his life, no matter where he was, Ronnie wrote to stay in touch. I found his letters funny, warm, and imaginative. I loved reading them and found myself looking forward to receiving them. Whenever Ronnie went away, Whenever Ronnie went away, I missed him terribly, and when his letters arrived, the whole world stopped so I could read them. I always loved not only what Ronnie said, but the way he said it, the inventiveness and the fun, natural way he expressed his feelings and described the world around him. I saved every letter, every card, every doodle. Anyone who knows me well knows I'm a saver. I always have been, and especially of anything having to do with my husband. Everyone teased me about it in the past and grumbled about it when it came time to pack up all the things I'd saved and moved. But then, when they were searching for things for the Ronald Reagan Library, they were suddenly very happy with me and the things I saved. For the library, for the librarians, the wedding clothes and the baby shoes and then invitations and presents and boxes and boxes of photographs that I'd held on to over the years were nothing less than a treasure. But for me, the most precious thing of all has always been this collection of Ronnie's letters. At first, I kept them so that I could read them over and over again if I felt it, like it. Later, I kept them in a shopping bag. I brought them to Washington, where a lot more were added. It was a habit with Ronnie to write, to feel in touch, sometimes even when we were in the same room. I've always loved them. In recent years, as Alzheimer's disease has gradually taken away Ronnie's ability to write, to remember, these letters have become even more important to me. They bring back so many memories. The letters trace the story of our life. They begin as cheerful notes from the early years when we first dated, when we were first dating. Then, in the first years of our marriage, they became deeper. 
They were always a part of our life. In the 50s and 60s, when Ronnie traveled to make a movie for Ford General Electric, he sent me telegrams and long letters from across the country. Later on, he sent me funny notes from California Governor's Office, then note cards from Air Force One. Sometimes, when we lived in the White House, he wrote me letters from across the room. Sometimes, I gave Ronnie cards, often two or three or more at a time for every holiday imaginable. Valentine's Day, Father's Day, Easter, even Halloween. But I wasn't good at putting my feelings into words. Writing came so naturally to Ronnie, but it didn't to me. He'd sit down, and without drafts, without corrections, he'd come up with the most perfect and personal way of saying things, right off the top of his head. I was always struck by the way he did it, by the beauty of what he wrote, and with the ease with which he expressed himself. I wish I could have written back in just the same way. Ronnie's letters tell the story of our courtship and how it matured from a Hollywood romance into a deeply loving and long-lasting marriage. It's interesting, I think, to see how our feelings grew over time and to hear Ronnie express his wonder at his happiness. I believe he was able to share on paper feelings he wouldn't have comfortably he wouldn't have been comfortable saying out loud, especially in those early days of our life together. His writing built an even closer bond between us. Ronnie is not a complicated man. He's a private man, even deep down a shy man, I think, but not a complicated one. These letters are special because they give a lovely portrait of a man in his own words. It is important, I think, to remember the happy times and the value of a life lovingly led. Particularly now, given Ronnie's illness and the darkness that shadows every human being's existence. In the climate of today, I think it would be good for all of us to focus on the positive, the true, and the things that can really last on character, humor, commitment, and love, and on the happy memories of a wonderful man in his life. His letters were keepsakes in the past and have become my guardians of memories today. They recall happy times, and above all, they preserve the voice of the Rani I love. Today, I want to leave you with a little challenge, um, a letter writing challenge. Um, I just love the way that um, Nancy talks about letters and how um, they can hold on to memories um, and how even now that her husband is going through this deteriorating um, at the time she was writing this um, and couldn't remember, she had, um, she had these letters that she could still hold on to um, and still remember um, the way things used to be. Um, so my challenge today is to write a letter to someone that you care about. Um, it could be another Marconi member, it could just be a neighbor, um, or you could stick one um, in the mailbox for um, a family member or an old friend that maybe you haven't seen in a while. Um, I think now, especially um, in the times that we're living in, it's important to remind um, remind one another, um, remind the people that we love, that we, that we do love them and we care about them. Um, so that's my challenge for you today, and I hope that you enjoyed this week's First Lady Friday.